Hello friends, Amy R. here with Pretty Paper and Ink with some more shimmer powder goodness. This time using Simon Says Stamps Beach Party Umbrellas background. When I saw this in the Let's Chill release, that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, oh, this will look great, heat embossed, and then shimmer powders over it. <laughs> so of course that's what I did. So I have it face up on my work surface. And I have a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper. And I'd used my anti-static powder tool on the watercolor paper. And then I inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink. And then just brought the paper onto the stamp. Pressed it down really well to get it to stamp onto the watercolor paper. And then I'm going to cover this with Simon's Detail White Embossing Powder. And make sure everything's coated tap off the excess and then I will melt this with my heat tool always tilting it in the light because white on white it's like impossible to see or at least it is for me half the time <laughs> so you just make sure everything is smooth and shiny and melted and you're good to go <clears throat> so once that's done I take a piece of the I have the misty sticky grids that I've shown in a bunch of videos recently. I've trimmed some down. You can also just tape this down to a hardboard. Just something to keep this as flat as possible because I'm going to add a lot of water. So I'm really loving the sticky grids because it's just convenient. So I've laid out my flour sack cloth just to contain any excess in the liquid. And then I'm using my three go-to colors of Nouveau Shimmer Powders, which is the Lunar Rocket, the Blue Blitz, and the Cherry Bomb, Cherry Bomb, because those three make rainbow. And it's just fun. <laughs> it's just fun. <clears throat> like I always say, do not squeeze the bottles. Do not squeeze the bottles. You will get a ton. You don't need very much. The more you play with them, you start figuring out how much you need or when to add more, etc, etc. Like I've just, I've done it so often that you kind of just know. So you spray it heavily with water. And I like I made that hand. I was like, then leave it. Like walk away. I'm breaking my own rule here. <laughs> but with good reason. I, it's still like, you know, wet. So it's still kind of looking like a hot mess. But there's areas on this background that are kind of between the umbrellas, if that makes sense. And I was curious to know whether I could kind of make it more neutral, I guess. Like I didn't want the color in between those spaces it's a subtle thing because there's not it's not like there's these big gaps but what I did is I just took um golden sparkler and I've shown this in other videos this one's you know a goldy shimmery color in the Nouveau shimmer powders however when it mixes with more like other colors it kind of is more brown and so I'm thinking like sand so what I just did was I just took a brush and I used the dry brush to soak up those little areas between the umbrellas so it kind of just removed the liquid. There's still a bit of color there, but that's fine. And then I just painted that uh, golden sparkler that I, you know, I put a little bit in my little palette there, added the teensiest bit of water. And then I'm just kind of like dropping that into those spaces so that when it dries, it'll just give it a little kind of brownish, goldish look. Again, it's subtle. In the end, it's not really necessary because, you know, there's so much going on on this background and it's so super colorful. But... That was my thought process. <laughs> and again, you leave everything else alone. You don't, you don't touch it. You just set it aside, go do something else. Because the magic in those powders is what, you know, letting them dry on their own. And it always looks a million times better once it's dry. It always looks like a hot mess when it's super wet. So it's sitting aside to dry. And for my sentiment, I'm using the CZ Design Beachy Keen stamp set that came out with the Let's Chill release as well. And I have a piece of vellum in my Misty and I'm stamping the Life's a Beach sentiment, which just cracks me up, honestly. Anyway, I'm stamping that with clear embossing ink as well. So I'd use my anti-static powder tool. I stamped it with the clear embossing ink. I put the vellum back in my Misty and stamped it a second time because these letters are very thick, like they're very wide. So it's a lot to cover. So I want to make sure I get a full, you know, stamped impression because I'm going to coat this, of course, with that detail white embossing powder and I don't want like gaps in it. However, if there had been gaps, I would have heat embossed it and then put it back in my Misty, stamped it a second time. You know, there's ways around it, but this worked. 
So I melted that with my heat tool. It only takes a few seconds when you're heat embossing on vellum because vellum is so thin. So I melted it. The background is dry. It's fabulous. We'll get back to it in a minute. I want to concentrate on the sentiment. <laughs> I'm using the coordinating wafer die to cut this out. And you can do this one of two ways. I cut it out first because I, there's very, very little wiggle room with um, the size of this sentiment and my little Xyron sticker maker. Apologies if the sound picks up in the background. The house being built next door, they're like cutting stone and just making a ton of noise and I can't think straight. But anyway, anyway, I got to get stuff done, man. So when using a sticker maker, you can do one of two ways. You can do it the way I'm showing now or you can run your piece through your sticker maker, then die cut it. And the pressure from the wafer die alleviates any like stickiness on the edges because it'll press it right into the backing paper. Since, like I said, I had very little leeway, I die cut first, then I run, ran this through my little sticker maker, and then I just pressed it in really well with my bone folder, and then I just used the like spatula end of my die tool. I've also used a stylus, I've shown that, and I trace around the edges of the die cut before removing that release uh, backing, and that just ensures that there's no sticky bits hanging around. Um, which is really easy with a wafer die like this. If it's a very detailed wafer die, I recommend running your cardstock, your vellum, whatever, through your sticker maker first, then die cutting. Because with the detail wafer die, like I said, the pressure of the die cut will alleviate needing to you know, trace and do the fiddly stuff. But with one like this, it's quick and easy. So there's options. So anywho, trim down my background. I adhered my sentiment. And the whole point of running it through the sticker maker is so you don't see the adhesive. And it also makes the vellum just slightly, like just slightly more transparent. So you can still see the background through it, which is really fun. With a sentiment like this, also it would have been super easy to just put adhesive behind the letters. Because again, the letters were so wide. Again, options. So my card base is Nina Desert Storm cardstock. I was going to do white because that would look really great too. But again, I was thinking I was like sand. <laughs> so I made my card base. I um, masked off at the score line. And then I'm inking up the background stamp again. This time with Simon's cobblestone ink. This is kind of one of my go-to neutrals, especially with Desert Storm cardstock. So I inked it up with that. And then I'm stamping that onto the inside of the card. This time using some scrap paper so I don't get that ink all over my hands. And then removing that, removing my little post-it mask there. So I've got the umbrellas all stamped on the inside of the card. And then I'm going to put this inside my Misty. And I'm going to stamp another sentiment from the Beachy Keen set. So I picked out my sentiment and I'm going to just kind of center that on the inside of this card. And that I'm going to stamp with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. So I've got, you know, the pattern of the umbrellas, but they're not so busy that I can't write over this with a pen. People have asked that before, like, what do you, like, where do you write your, you know, greetings to the recipient? Right over whatever I've stamped. I don't care. That's the whole point. So um, this was an extra random thought. <laughs> We've already got the shimmer and the color from the Nouveau Shimmer Powders. I was curious to see if I could do, if this would work. So I took my aqua shimmer pen that's even more glittery than the shimmer powders and I went over just this center umbrella. I've sped this up in editing but basically I used a light hand because this does reactivate because these powders are water reactive. So this does reactivate. So I just did each little section at a time. Like I didn't drag the brush across all the stamped like embossed lines. I didn't want to drag the colors into the next area. And I used the light hand because I didn't want to continue mixing these colors because that's the magic of these these powders is the mixing they do on their own. Like each little section has its own different little color blend. So I went over it with the shimmer pen because I just wanted extra sparkle on this one umbrella. And it worked. So now I'm like, oh, I might have to do this more often. <laughs> and I'll show the glitter at the end because it's it's always very subtle on camera, but I'll show you guys how beautiful it is. So I used foam tape to pop this onto my card base. 
Once that was popped into place, of course I was going to add more bling. I'm using this, my Studio Cardia Round Iridescent Gems. These are just have been like my go-to favorite now for a while. Um, kind of sprinkle these throughout. I use them for like the centers of each of the umbrellas and then, you know, added a few extras just because. And then once I was kind of happy with the placement, I'm going to adhere these into place with dabs of Craft Tacky Glue. And once the glue dries clear, they end up just being a very... With this shimmering, sparkly of a background, they just be, they're just a subtle enhancement. <laughs> so, got those adhered. And then I turned the flashlight on my phone so you guys can see the shimmer and the sparkle. And again, I just, the color blend, you know, just using three color powders or shimmer powders. Love. But look at the sparkle. It's so fun. Even prettier in real life, as always. But, you know. So, yeah. This was a lot of fun and really easy because the powders, you just, the biggest thing is just having the patience, letting it dry and leaving them alone. <laughs> and as always, I will have a link to a playlist I have with more, like more than two dozen videos using these shimmer powders in all sorts of different ways. Um, and then of course, I will also have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check those out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.